Welcome in, everyone. Happy Halloween. Brother Green should be arriving any minute now. Let's see. Uh, Brother Green. Oh, uh, I'm coming. One sec. Hey, everybody. Happy Halloween. Hey. Happy Halloween, everybody. Well, what's up, Gormites? Rock and roll. I love Halloween. Brother Beard, wha what's going on? Uh, happy Halloween, Brother Green. You look very do, excited. Do you know uh, what I am? Banana. Gormu. I'm a, I'm a Gorminion. <laughs> I'm a Gorminion. Yeah, you like oh. it? You didn't tell me. Uh, no, that's, that's, really, that's really great. Uh, Gorminion. So it's, like a, it's a play on words between Gormu and the Yeah, I thought that was pretty Me. clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah mi the, the minion characters from Despicable Me. Yeah, that's really you can't, cool. You can't tell, uh, actually. I've got a, I've got, I, I did a lot. I got overalls, too, but you can't. It's not <laughs> yeah. really worth it if they're under the. No, I can, I can just, see it. Yeah, that's hold really. On. Just, that's let me just yoink them up. How does that look? That's really funny. Looks really good. Uh, you didn't tell me that we were going to be wearing Gormama. Costumes. Gormana. Sorry, I was just doing, I was practicing some quotes from the <laughs> Gorminion. Gor yeah, Gormana. Yeah, yeah. A, Brother Beard, what I got to tell you movie. about it's a, it's a hot. Despicable me, man. It's Halloween. I, I assume that in a church, you don't usually wear a costume while well, you're in, on what stage. Church? in what church 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 <laughs> most of the most of the ones i've been to i know we're starting this is our own religion so we can do whatever no rules I just am asking for a little bit more communication Woo! halloween i love halloween i mean i spent hours this morning going out there as a gourmetian getting some getting some good candy i love candy that's that's my thing this morning you were trick-or-treating this morning or yeah, you're buying I mean, the candy to Well, I was prepping the service and so I just decided while while I was waiting, I like sort of finished up some stuff and I had like an hour to kill. So I just did like a round around the neighborhood down the block and uh Yeah, they they didn't I didn't I didn't come home with a lot. I actually got um hold on, I have I got I got my bucket. Ah. I was given a few things. I was given a one uh green apple laffy taffy. Ooh. That's uh, I wasn't actually given this one. It was on the front door. That's probably my that. least favorite candy, honestly, is green apple Laffy Taffy. I love green apple Laffy Taffies. They're so... Uh, oh, no. Uh, they taste like wax. Like uh, like like rotten wax. Uh, I really do not like Laffy Taffy, Brother Green. I'm sorry. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. I mean... Hey, I, look, I, look. I, I want to say I'm really happy that you're enjoying Halloween. Obviously, in our religion, we're not anti-Halloween or anything, but I just hope that you, you know, you just make sure to be... Uh, leaning more towards the Gormu and less towards the Minion. <laughs> more towards the worship, less towards the candy. That's all I'm trying to say. Well, I feel like if I show up and I sort of am, am, am in a, you know, jubilous mood. Is that a word? And I sort of am, like, excited about Halloween. Mm -hmm. Then the people will sort of feel that. And they'll be like, wow, why is that guy so excited about Halloween? He must have something else in his life that is drawing him towards you know, mm. this amazing... Yeah, you're being, a good wit you're being a good witness for Gormu. I understand what you're saying. Exactly. I also uh, I also got but, a couple other things from... Uh, I got a lighter yeah. also. I just saw it. I show you the rest of my haul. And then I also got a couple uh, aux, aux cable to quarter inch uh, adapters for headphones in case you need to plug them in. So not a great did haul. You go, <laughs> did you go trick-or-treating or did you go dumpster diving behind a radio <laughs> shack? Well, I mean, it's about going to the houses. It's not about like, oh, where are we getting this stuff from? I was in a, I, I got, some of it was on the front porch. There was a couple that were in mailboxes. It was just, I don't know. I just sort of did a round real quick. You never just do a round on Halloween. I mean, it's classic. I can't say that I have done a round before. Gordon. Uh, but you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. I just, really funny. I'm really excited. That's really funny. Um, but guess what? What? I actually lied to you. Oh. Why? I did dress up. What of course you? I dressed up for Halloween. Oh. Of course I'm wearing a costume. Is it under your but robes? But I'm not wearing... Yes, it's under my robes, but I would never Yo, dress easy. up as Despicable <laughs> gonna... Me character Minion. Why? All right, I... easy there, Brother Beard. Easy there. <laughs> what are you... <laughs> I dressed up as Gormu Picture. Oh my god. <laughs> you have this... I dressed up as 
the picture of Can't Gordon. believe you've had that tape to your chest this whole time. I, <laughs> I didn't even... Wow, I did not expect... I didn't expect that you sat right back down. You're not even gonna... That's that's an Bro, unironic. Honey, do you wanna... I mean, are, what's the plan when you go... When you go trick-or-treating, are you gonna fully take it off? Uh... Are you I nude under really the robes? Are you fully nude I, under well, there? Yes, I am fully nude under the robe. I'm not gonna unzip my... Okay. Why don't we sit back down? That I is... I think people can just... I'll, I'll just... <laughs> if I'm trick-or-treating, trick I'll just... I'll just, <laughs> I'll just... I'll just, like, hold the robes and say, You can see there's a special picture under here. <laughs> you think... They're calling the cops in the other room. They're like, Honey, I'll stall. Why would they... Go call the Why cops. Why would they call the cops? No, they wouldn't. They're gonna I, be I'd like, oh, you dressed up. Picture of Gormu. You dressed up as a little prophet for Halloween, and you're like, no, I'm not. Not just any prophet. Well, I, I guess, I guess people dress up as, uh, as gods for Halloween sometimes. I mean, you're dressed up as a picture, the first picture of a god. So I guess you couldn't really dress up as one before that because this is sort of the first picture of a god we've ever had. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's a pretty unique costume. I've never seen someone dress up as a picture before, so I think that's pretty, pretty unique. I've definitely seen people dress up as minions. Um, okay, well, and I also easy. think that my costume definitely is much more like honoring to Gormu. But you know, I, I'm really glad that you're having fun and and that you dressed up as a minion, and that's really cool. It's the really funny movie. So I don't know. I'm just sort of. Uh... I don't know. It's just in like a, ho a Halloween spirit, a holiday spirit. Um, but no, it's fine. I'm just gonna. Sh I'll sh I'll shake it off. I mean, two back to back uh, holidays. You know, it's a weird thing. It's a weird thing that we had Confession Day and Halloween back to back weeks. But you can't. True. I mean, there's only so many weeks in the year. You know, some fall. Well, the thing is with Confession Day, there's multiple Confession Days in a year because it's not about mm -hmm. some day. It's not about some holiday. It's about when the going gets tough and the sin jar fills up. We gotta purge it out. It's so it's less, yeah. it's more of a house cleaning, house, house spring cleaning situation. And then, mm -hmm. but anyways, th but I digress. It is still an important holiday that is very yeah. important. It's definitely more yeah. important than Halloween. Well, I'm very happy that you're enjoying your costume. I'm enjoying my costume. I'm really excited to, I, I'm not going to flash anyone on Halloween, I promise, but I okay. am going to find a way to. To show that I am you, maybe you sporting the picture of Gormu. Why? Why did you not just put it on the outside of your <laughs> outside your robes? I don't. I don't mean to like pry. I just am confused a little bit. All right, fine. I'll put it on the. Uh, outside. You know, you can do fine. it after the sir. Okay, there he goes, and he's ripping it off his skin. <laughs> I don't know if this is appropriate in the church. Oh God, do we need to see that much of his torso? Sorry, I'm sorry. Hey, you can avert your eyes. <laughs> you know, your children shouldn't sorry, even be just... here. So. I used industrial strength tape to really get it stuck there, so I just completely out unnecessary. Here. I've never heard anyone use the term I used in you guys going high with it. <laughs> He's going a lot higher up. Okay, well I yeah. mean I like the costume. Well, I want people to be able to see it. Yeah. I, I think it's cool. Um uh dressing up as a picture is something I haven't seen before, but let's let's I'm I'm very excited. Can you keep the crinkling down to a minimum? I think I think it's picking up on the you, you know, if your costume could just you know, you might have yeah. a cool Gormu based Maybe I'll costume. tuck it. I'll tuck it in like a. Big <laughs> like you're about to eat a steak dinner. <laughs> yeah. That I you're losing the concept of the costume, and also it's really loud. I think it's uh, you're yeah. really taking. Okay, okay, still going, and now it's completely. I have no idea what you're dressed as, but why don't we just? Why don't you worry about that later? Worry about the costume later. Let's. Uh, we're gonna move on. Well, uh, anyways, welcome to the Fellowship Covenant Church. If it's your first time here, I'm sorry. Um, we are a church that worships uh, a god named Gormu. We are Gormites. We, we, you know, practice the religion of Gormism. We're very happy to have you here. It's not confusing to jump in. We're just one big family that loves talking about Gormu. Um, but for the new people here, we're about to do our opening prayer. And for opening prayers in Gormism, for any prayers in Gormism, uh, we, we do the practice of putting two fingers up and never closing your, your eyes have to be open the whole entire prayer or else you're not letting yeah. Gormu put his seed inside of you. Um, so let's get going with the opening prayer. Uh, very excited to have you all here. Let's jump into it. Oh, 
Lord Gormu. Thank you for having us here in this church on this wonderful, wonderful holiday of Halloween. Of course, it's no Gormu's Day, it's no Confession Day, but we are so happy to be celebrating a classic American holiday in this classic American church. Um, thank you so much for, for really pouring your seed into us, and I hope that today's sermon convicts so many people in the audience where when they go out tonight to trick-or-treat, they can talk to the people who they're trick-or-treating to and tell them about Gormism and spread spread the holy seed. Um, so I, I hope you please bless the service and praise be. Oh, man, I had trouble that time. You know what it is? Why. You know what it is? I think What is it? I think it's a good like I I cry every time when you pray because yeah. it's a good prayer and I think that was my breast prayer yet. So I think not my breast yeah, prayer. Yeah, it made yet, me but you know what I mean. It made me um it made it, that's what it is. I thought it was I was just having trouble staring, but it's actually I'm very filled with emotion. Yeah. So great prayer, brother Green. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And uh, before we move on, we actually are going to jump in to some fun Halloween themed things this this service because Gormu loves Halloween. Uh, he won't he won't tell me he, he's not uh, he's unfortunately not celebrating this year because uh, they're what? personal mental health. He's taking a mental health break, so uh, he's just on skipping Halloween? out. Just it's been it's been like the past week. I think he just told me that uh, he's a little burnt out. Um, he's a little burnt out work wise, and he wants to take uh, a couple mental health days. So I uh, uh, unfortunately he he will be you know doing his own little celebration up in his house, but he's not going to be doing the whole costume and the whole nine yards. He's probably just going to do a, ki- a chill kickback because yeah, party planning is a whole different thing. Um, That's okay. Yeah, we, uh, we obviously wouldn't judge Gormu for that. No. Um, but we will down here, you know, he, he told us, of course, that this is one of his favorite holidays. And although he will not be dressing up this year because he's also got a big costume planned for next year, he wants us to, you know, talk about it a little bit in the service. And I think he would appreciate it if we answered some questions about Halloween uh, relating to Gormism. But before we do that, uh, Brother Beard, you, you, why don't you tell everybody in the audience about how they can spread the holy seed of the church, spread the word, where they can follow us, where they can find us, and do it in a very quick amount of time that isn't abrasive to listen to and is informative yet efficient and quick, okay? I'm just going to give you a quick set of notes. I think you're doing great at it. I just have a lot of notes to give you. It's going to be very easy on the ears and easy on the brain to understand as well. So, and make sure you tell uh, them what they get. <laughs> tell them what they get when you say well, you'll understand. Okay, go ahead. All right, everyone. So we're going to talk very fast about some very fast things. So very fast <laughs> this things. is the Fellowship Covenant Church. Obviously, if you subscribe to the channel, you join the inner sanctum. But if you want to join the even greater sanctum, then you can go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash fcpodcast, where there you will get a bonus episode every single week of us talking even more than we talk in the main sermon. What? Extra talking? Uh, so, and all you have to do is give us $2 a month. This is your $2 tithe that you give to Gormu. Gormu will rain his seed upon you when you give us $2. Give us your money. Please don't give us any more or less than $2. But if you don't give us $2, we are going to cry ourselves to sleep. Uh, join our true. Twitter community, clicking the link in the bio. <laughs> Follow us on Instagram at Fellowship Covenant. Follow us on TikTok at Fellowship Covenant Pod. We've been posting lots of TikToks. <laughs> There's a lot of it. There's a lot TikTok of TikToks account. on that account. Yep. Also, follow and review us on Spotify. We've passed 600 reviews. We're probably up to even more now. If you hate looking at our faces, which I would not understand, but if you hate that, you can listen to us on Spotify, Apple Music, or wherever you find your podcast. And yes. That's it. This is all yeah. stuff. Uh, I actually was told in a quick vision by Gormu that once we hit 1,000 reviews on Spotify, we are going to see another picture from him. It's wow. on the horizon, and I think we might be up to 800 now, uh, getting close at least. I mean, what, uh, what other religion does the god, you know, choose to share things depending on how many I know, Spotify it's so cool. The, the church has. Like, imagine if you got cool, cool stuff from just, just, like, hanging out at the church and doing stuff for free. We're at 792 reviews, so I think after this episode, we might hit it, and then we'll get a very special picture from Gormu, and I'm very excited to see his hot bod. <sighs> I mean, we've already got this one. You can see how good this one is. All right. Uh, Take it easy. Take it easy.
Let's let's jump into some Halloween questions. Sister Sid, of course, who gives us our confessions, has asked us some questions about Halloween relating to gourmism, and I thought this would be the perfect time, of course, to talk about it. To so, clarify our yes. beliefs. Yeah. So why don't we go back and forth, and I'll ask you a question first, and you can kind of, you know, preach on it, and then and, and come back to me, and I'll preach on it. A uh, little bit of a mm-hmm. pre-sermon before we jump into the holy text. Yeah. Um, kind of a pre-game of sermon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, number one, does Gormu believe in ghosts? <laughs> okay, so I actually, this is actually a tough question for me because I've been uh, oh, wow. a little bit emotional this, this past week. Um, I got into a bit of hot water in the last episode where I accused you that the verse that you brought for the sermon was actually written by demons. Yeah. Um, but then I remembered that obviously in Gormism, we don't believe in demons. Um, so I just wanted to apologize. I wanted to genuinely apologize. I should not have accused a verse of coming from demons if demons obviously don't exist. And in that same vein, I'm going to say that Gormu is uh, definitely a skeptic when it comes to ghosts. You know, <laughs> yeah. I, th- I don't think Gorm. I don't think Gormu has has closed the door on the possibility of ghosts, but okay. I think Gormu just hasn't been shown any concrete evidence that they exist. Okay. You're you're gonna need to show Gormu a little bit more than like, oh look at this, I saw a shadow in the window, Ooh. or I heard a noise in my attic. That means ghosts are definitely real. Yeah. No, Gormu needs some hardcore proof. He needs a ghost to sit there and be like, I am a ghost. Uh and I don't think Gormu has ever been shown anything like that before. So mm, Nope. Something to think about. So be skeptical of ghosts. So oh, okay. demons definitely don't. No. Okay, demons definitely don't exist. Ghosts might exist, and Gormu, the spirit from another realm, God definitely does exist. Yeah. So that's kind of where write we all stand. that down. Write all that down. Yeah. Um, I personally, um, obviously, after confession week last week, uh, that what what you said about the demons definitely filled the the bucket a little bit more, but. Of course, you've confessed. You've talked about it. I forgive you, of course, because you know that's that's what all this is Thank about. You. It's about purging your sin, and you just purge your sin. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm proud of you for it. You may have, you know, actually screamed at me last week. You did actually scream at me a few times, um, but yeah. of course, yeah. I forgive you, Brother Beard, because uh, this church would not be the same without you. And I know you care about Gormu. You know, you, you care about Gormu a, uh, as much as I do, and so yeah. Uh, and I think. I just got upset last week because you said that you heard the verse from a scary red man, but now I'm realizing you were probably just having a night terror, you know, that was probably just your sleep paralysis demon, but not actually a demon. And we all know that you suffer from night sweats, so this is probably, you're just having, uh, you're probably just having psychological episodes at night, and I need to be more, you know, it's, it's honestly a little bit ableist of me to assume that, you know... Uh, that your psychological episodes are, are demons. I don't know if I'd say so. that completely. I feel like that's a little bit off. Off. I feel like that's a little bit off the mark in terms of where I'm at personally. Um, <laughs> so I just wanted to say I don't judge you for your uh, paralysis demon. Yeah, and I mean demons may not be real, but of course we've talked about how there are dark forces at play. Um, and mm-hmm. you know that may have affected something but at the end of the day like i really just don't think you know i think we can all agree there was no fault of my own and i you know came away perfectly perfectly clean because you know as you said in the, in this situation but you also have been having a lot of heterosexual sex but we don't need to get into that let's go to we can the jump next in if you want to jump into it i'm totally fine uh no, repenting uh, over it i i'm down to talk mm-hmm talk about it um next but, question okay. comes from yeah. this is also from <laughs> it's, sid. it's all from sid uh, <laughs> it's not coming from anyone <laughs> uh why don't you read me why don't you read me the question what is gormu's favorite halloween treat sid says that uh hers is kit kats why, so what's why, favorite Halloween treat? What's the point of including that anyways? Whatever. Uh, Gormu's favorite Halloween treat, you know, he loves a lot of different treats, but, and, you know, he, he switches between them. But at least from what I know, the last thing that he said was that he really likes his mom's original Rice Krispie treat recipe. But the kind mm-hmm. where you, you put, like, uh, you, you turn them into little Christmas wreaths 
and you put little red hots on mm. them. He really likes those. So that's not really much of a Halloween treat. Sometimes they make a Halloween version, <laughs> but he really likes that specific type yeah. of Rice Krispie. Not the Christmas tree ones. The but the Halloween ones. ones. Like Halloween themed Rice, Rice Krispie treats. Crispy yeah. Halloween treats, homemade. You can find them on foodnetwork.com slash recipes slash food network kitchen, blah, 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 blah. Who cares? <laughs> Whatever. Anyways, let me ask you one more question before we jump into the real sermon. Uh, what, what is this? Do you think Gormu thinks I'm cute? This is just, I, I mean, this is, this can't, can we, can we put this under heresy? Do you think Gormu thinks I'm cute? This one's not Halloween related. I'm just curious. Out of three questions. Isn't, okay, well, let's be clear. Sister Sid is a woman, correct? Correct. Gormu is obviously a homosexual, so obviously no, Gormu does not think you're cute. Yeah. That is a very disrespectful thing. To, Gormu thinks that I'm cute. I, you know, <laughs> me and Gormu have flirted a bit. I, yeah. I, you know, Gormu's just, a man. Like, I hope you guys know Gormu identifies as a man. And, you know, you can't... Yeah. This is not like, oh, God's a woman. Gormu blah, would blah, not blah, be blah. flirting with women. Like. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. God is a woman. Yeah, maybe maybe some other God. Gormu is like the only God where we have concrete <laughs> proof of him saying, I identify as a man. My pronouns I are he, him. I, yeah. And yeah, uh, Gormu's pronouns are he, him. He is homosexual and he does not think women are cute. So don't be asking that kind of question. That's very heretical. Heresy. Heresy. Bad, bad, bad. Shame, 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 shame. shame. shame, shame, shame. Nothing like kind of uh, shaming like the third or fourth in command at the church in front of everybody. I love that. That's just a Halloween thing to do. Sometimes you got to do it. So kind of a spooky shame. 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 Ah, ah. (laughs) Anyways, uh, guys, I think it's about time for us to jump into the, the word of Gormu from the Gormu Chronicle. It is time for us to do our weekly sermon. Oh, yeah. And do we have some spicy verses to preach? I have been getting a couple complaints, um, you know, from people who are like, why don't you ever preach the whole entire uh, chapter of the book? It seems awfully out of context. And if it's like the middle of a book, it just seems like you guys are kind of bullshitting it. We don't have, Come we're on. writing it in the process. So Gormu will sort of tell we're us where to. We're in the process of writing. Uh, yeah. Ever heard of uh, writing a book? Okay. It's uh, being an author is hard. I've been uh, being an author. Uh, I didn't realize how hard it was to be an author. But after I started doing it, I was like, man, this is tough. Ooh. And obviously our sermons are supposed to be, you know, solemn moments of praise that we give to Gormu. But at the same time, you know, we don't want to be preaching for hours and hours we want to get you in and out the door so you can start spreading gormu's seed if we sat here and preached an entire book of gormu we'd be here for 13 hours Uh, people it does take 13 you know that's uh, we've got to get you out the door so you can start trick-or-treating and spreading gormu's seed to your neighborhood yeah give everyone gormu's seed give it out your door give it give it put it in their baskets and everything or whatever Speaking um, of which, I, I have a verse for you here. Yes, of course. Okay, let's jump right into sermon. I'm excited to preach on this Halloween. Uh, today I am preaching from... <sighs> wow. Gri- <laughs> this is coming from the book of Grishy Grosh. <laughs> Grishy Grosh. Yeah. I know everyone in the audience is, might be familiar with that one. Grishy Grosh uh, 9-11. <laughs> What's so funny? Why are you laughing? It's from, um, it's from chapter lie, it's, 9, it's, verse 11. Of a grishy grush. Are you yeah, pranking me funny. or something? Why are you laughing? So no, hard? this is not. No, 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 no. I'm just joyful. Just joyful. Okay, well, grishy grush 9, 11 says, On the night of Halloween, thou shalt not give out candy to the children like the sinners and non-believers do, but instead thou must give them seeds, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, etc., to remind the children of Gormu's seed that it, it is shared with all those who put their trust in Gormu. Candy may help make children obese, but only Gormu's seed can make children's hearts obese with Gormu's love. Grishy Grosh 911. <laughs> wow. Uh, well, so I mean, it is a pretty straightforward verse, a very Halloween based verse. I'm glad that, that you brought one to the table today. Um, and it's basically about, you know, the idea that you will go out there on Halloween and you will go out there in your normal life every single day and you will be handing things out to people, whether that be compliments, conversations, uh, 
you know, talk about, about hobbies and secular uh, things, you know? Oh, I like, oh, I like this new, uh, Drake and 21 Savage are releasing an album. Oh, yeah, what about the book called The Gormu Chronicles that Gormu is releasing soon? So that's sort of where I'm at with it, where this is sort of a metaphor about, uh, you know, and I don't know, usually, I know we don't, this is a very uncommon thing in texture, in texture, scripture, in text. <laughs> it's texture, that, yeah. This is a very uncommon thing that things are metaphors, Put you know? So this is actually what we like to call a metaphor. I don't know if you guys have heard. Uh, that. Oh, is this is another metaphor? Is every verse that you preach on a metaphor? <laughs> well, well how, fun, how fun would it be for me to go, well, you know what it means, you know? I'm trying to really dig deep and figure out what Gorbu's trying to say here. Um, not everything oh, is yeah. so literal I'm all sorry. the time. Um, you know, there is an interesting right. part of this verse that some of you may turn your heads at, where it says, candy may help make children obese, but with Gorbu's seed, it can make children's hearts obese with his love. Now, I don't want people to get yeah. that twisted and think that the candy making children obese is necessarily a bad thing, okay? As we have no, talked about before... Th- no, it's, a, it's a clearly a good thing. Gormu loves obesity and it's a sin to be skinny because the more surface area you have in your body the more love you can give to gormu and that's how he gauges it of course because how else are you going to gauge how much surface area someone has to praise you with besides you know the bigger people who can take up more space and you know I, I, people some people say hey what about someone who's like 411 versus someone who's like six feet tall there's a lot more surface area but they didn't do anything it's not about that it's about the effort I don't agree with this, but you constantly tell me, Brother Beard, that the reason why Gormu loves obese people, (laughs) this is what you are telling, this is what you tell me constantly Mm -hmm. behind camera, is that you think, and I don't agree with this, you think that that Gormu says, (laughs) I know it sounds like I'm walking on eggshells, I just wanted to be clear that you tell me this all the time, is that Uh tall people aren't better than short people because that's not a choice, (laughs) and you tell me. (laughs) <laughs> that you can choose to make yourself bigger. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying that for not everyone. Saying, you're obesity. not saying this. <laughs> I'm sweating you're a lot. Is oh, it hot in here? It on me. Oh, uh, it's really hot in the church. It's not always a choice, but if you want to eat a lot of candy, that can help you gain weight. I think we all know that. But um, of course, more I, than anything. I, think, I, th- I do think people who are blessed with tallness... Uh, do have more surface area and are able to praise Gormu with their tallness, but it's one of those things where that's a blessing that they've been given. Um, and so they should feel pride in their tallness and that they are, you know, they do have more surface area than the shorts, but... Um, the shorts? You know, <laughs> that seemed if you awfully... Are the, like... If you are sinful and short, you can always be like Danny DeVito and get very wide. So that's, you always have a possibility to increase your surface area, even if you are uh, cursed with the, with shortness. And that's what you've been saying to me. Yeah. I do I've not. been saying that a lot. But yeah. let's, I mean, that's all, that's neither here nor there. Let's, let's get, I've got a great verse that I want to send you and I'm just so excited to send it to you. I think we should just wrap up that preaching there. Boom. Preach on that. All right, this is from the book. Oh, I love Mugor. Mugor is one of my I knew you'd books. like this one. Oh, my God. Mugor 1030. Yeah. Oh, that is amazing. And that's the date. That's ha- Halloween. That's the date that it is today. Of course, to do- yeah. today. Listen, I don't want to get into the semantics of the Halloween versus the Sunday. I know Halloween's technically on a Monday this year, and I did go earlier. This is all neither here nor there. Everything's sort of a wash when it comes to holidays here. But... Let's just, just move on with the verse. This does Don't worry co- about the logistics. This does coincide with today's date, but today's date is not Halloween. It is tomorrow. Uh, okay. Boo! Did I scare you? No. Boo! Did I scare you that time? God damn it! Yeah. So this is, um... This is a verse that, uh... <laughs> actually, this is... This is part of the context for why uh, Gormu is taking a mental health day this Halloween. Um, because last Halloween, he did try to scare the neighborhood uh, spirit children that live in Gormu's realm. Um, and unfortunately, he was not able to scare them. He yeah. put on a really cool, really cool, really spooky costume, but unfortunately, the children in the spirit realm just did not get scared by it. Um, the way that I think we can apply this verse to our lives is, you know, things don't always go the way that we're wanting them to. 
Sometimes we try to scare our friends. Sometimes we try to make our marriage work. <laughs> you know, try to. <laughs> that was try a to weird avoid jump, them. brother Beard. Where did you pull that one from? <laughs> Why did you just suddenly talk, start talking about marriages? <laughs> I'm just talking about things that you could apply this to. Your marriage, sometimes that you want to, How can you, you apply to, like, your marriage? I'm saying things don't always go how you want in life. Okay. Sometimes you try to scare people. Sometimes you try to make the marriage work, and the, the marriage <laughs> just isn't working. Why? And you try to say, I, you try to say, I love you. I'm telling you I love you. Why don't you love me back, Gorm, damn it? Um, but sometimes you have to just accept that... They aren't going to love you back. Sometimes marriages don't work. Sometimes you have to get divorced. Sometimes you try to scare kids and they just laugh and point and say, ha, 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 you're not scary. You're not scary. You're pathetic. You pathetic loser. And sometimes your wife leaves you and then you're all alone on Halloween and you're sitting in your room in your bed and you're just gorging yourself on candy. You just have an entire box of Reese's Pieces and you're just pouring it right down your throat and you're thinking, I am such a fucking failure. But you're not a failure because you have Gormu. So wow. Uh, I mean, yeah, you hit the nail right on the head there. I, I mean, technically, what you're saying is true. Seems like you dug to some sort of deep personal place for that one. You stuck a Red Bull in here. How is that? I didn't even know we had those. Are they? Have you been hiding them from me in the, oh, yeah, ba- in the back room? The... Yeah, I, b- I bought a fridge for the for the break room. Don't worry about it. What well, I. Okay. I mean, I kept saying we should invest in that. You kept talking about some boat and now, so then, then now my food, I've been sort of packing in an ice pack for weeks. And now all of a sudden, this whole time, there's been a fridge that I haven't been able to cool my food in. After you told I was me to the get one. the fridge. I, you told I told me to you get, to get the, the fridge, fridge weeks to, ago, and then you I bought the boat. I forgot to tell you about that. I told you. I forgot to tell well, you. I don't you. I raise your fridge. voice. Okay, Enough, you have fridge. an issue raising your I voice. I got the fridge. Me. There's... There's Red Bulls in it. If you want a sugar-free Red Bull. Yeah, I actually do want a sugar-free Red Bull. I'm going to get one after the service. Thank you very Great. much do for that. offering. Okay? Yeah, you're welcome. Anyways, it's time to move on to uh, a very special edition of one of the most popular events that we hold here at our church. It is very important in Gormism that you purge your sin. It's the only way that you can truly be clean so Gormu will fuck with you when you go to his house. If you're new to Gormism, of mm-hmm. course, when you die, everyone goes to Gormu's house. We sort of kick back, catch up on the lore. Why don't you keep up, okay? Um, but yeah, today is a very special episode of Halloween Confessions! <laughs> this so, is going to get you spooked as fuck. You're going to be like, what the? Ooh. I've never been so spooked. Oh, they're confessing to such scary <laughs> things. So today we asked a bunch of Gormites to send us their spooky confessions. Who knows what that means? <laughs> it's a very vague, uh, very vague prompt, but we uh, uh, assuredly, Sister Sid kind of grabbed some, despite all of the weird heretical things that she said earlier in the service, she grabbed us, she grabbed us some, some confessions and we're going to uh, talk about them today, so... Got some nice meaty, girthy confessions to devour. Yeah. So do you want to start us out and and talk about the first confession from a Gormite? (gasps) I want to start a cold. That was me trying to do a ooh, but I kind of just was like, ooh. Yeah, sounds like we got a, um, I mean, it sounds like we've got a real Transylvanian vampire sending in a confession. I don't know if you can assume that about him. Usually, if you say Vond, that usually implies a Transylvanian vampire. Uh, that's a, I so. feel like you're saying a gross stereotype about people that, you know, aren't fully comfortable in their bodies. So, I uh, I support the trans community, personally, but, you know, if that's something that... <laughs> Wait, what? what? <laughs> I thought you were talking about... I thought you were trying to say... I said vampire, say, not transpire. No, but you said, tra- you said something about him being a trans vampire. And I was just confused why you assumed he was trans. <laughs> Uh, I'm just laughing because I am just so confused how... Yeah, no, yeah, you're right. Transylvania is the country that is fully composed of trans people. I didn't know so it was that a... that is I true. Thought, that was a bit... I got my words mixed up or something. I didn't mean to come off as offensive or ignorant about the situation at hand, but... All I'm going to say before we start is wanting to start a cult is very bad. Do not start cults. No. Uh, cults are evil. We do, not approve of, we do not approve of cults in this religion, so don't do that. Um, <clears throat> all right. 
When I was around six or seven years old, I started to have an obsession with vampires and everything to do with them. Not Twilight, but pretty much everything surrounding vampires at the time interested me, especially v- uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Okay. Except, of course, my little edgelord self always sided with the vampires, as I desperately wanted to be one. So one day I decided, why not just be one? I just began telling everyone that I was, in fact, a member of the vampiric horde. Most of the adults in my life left me to it, as it was one of the more harmless of my delusions (laughs) at the time. So they had some much more harmful delusions. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) <laughs> that's that's really funny to me that they're like, oh yeah, I had some much more harmful. I'm not going to tell you about those. I'm just telling you about the vampire the vampiric delusions. horde. Yeah, but the other kids must have thought that it was a very exciting game because one day a girl in my class asked me what it was like. Well, after I explained all the amazing benefits such as flying, control of bats, and of course drinking blood, she was very interested, and so I offered to turn her. Oh no! Okay, this is this a, of course. <laughs> this story just this turned of it course. Up. Of course, this yeah. is the next step. Just ratcheted it up. The next logical step. Of course, uh, this in course involved me sucking on her neck for about thirty seconds before she was drained of all her humanity. Now I told her, as the vampire that turned her, she had to follow me and my guidance and do everything I said because she was uh, the vampire a level below me. I'm very glad. Oh, I was God. worried that, like, she was going to actually bite her neck and, like, <laughs> kill her. But instead, it's just a kid giving another kid a hickey, which is, uh, I don't know yeah. how which one's worse. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we end up, uh, confessions just become, like, I hate kids and they're fucking weird. <laughs> it's, like, every week. <laughs> I think it's because, yeah, we have a lot of, like, people in their 20s watching this. And when yeah. they think of their biggest sins, it's always like, oh, I remember what I did when I was eight. <laughs> Um, she was actually fairly happy to comply and even brought some of her friends over for me to turn as well, all having to follow the same rules. And of course I had to give each of them what were essentially hickeys. And so for the next few days to a week, I was the head vampire in my school. And this small group of girls did almost everything I said from carrying stuff for me to ignoring a girl wearing the color blue, which I explained to them was our mortal enemy as the opposite of red. Wow. That's so stupid that, like, that's absolutely <laughs> ridiculous that you'd, like, be against a certain color. Yeah, you bo- you just bully a girl for wearing a color that day. That's yeah. the power of vampires, though, you know? I'd kill to have that kind of power back in the day. Except, I mean, obviously, in our religion, we know that, like, green is sinful, but that's because it's tied to envy and all those uh, negative yeah, uh, for sure, man. For sure. Uh, yeah. Is that why you hate the the sour apple Laffy Taffy so much? Which is, which that I'm, is true. That's probably what it is. Which yeah. I'm now realizing, you know, maybe hard to see for people who are in the audience. <laughs> but just so you know, why would it be hard to see? We're just recording no, in a church. In the church, the lighting. This the sta- We got new stained glass, so stuff like this might uh, look a little odd. But it's just the way the like light it's a reflection. Yeah, it's yeah. just the way the light might hit it and it might look a little weird. So just ignore stuff yeah. like that. Um, um, I, I know it might be a little bit, it might throw you off a little bit. Like if you watched <laughs> earlier and maybe it took you out of it a little bit, mm-hmm. it's just the lighting versus the cameras. It's, it's just a reflection. Yeah. Just don't worry about it. Uh, okay. The teachers started to notice what I was up to and tried to ask me nicely to stop, but I ignored them. I was enjoying the high life as much as power as a six year old can obtain. So, of course, after barely a week, the teachers put a stop to my horde building by calling my parents. But deep down, I yearned once again for power. I now realize that my yearning is thanks to the lack of Gormu in my life and not for power. So I beg that his light shine upon me in forgiveness for my slimy and sly ways of the past, for which I repent thusly. Wow. Wow, yeah. This is a really great confession. I mean, it doesn't really sound like anyone got seriously harmed. Uh, (laughs) If you were like, hey, kid, uh, go up on your roof and become a bat. Transform into a bat and then jump and fly away. You know, Uh, I'd be like, all right. I mean, they did. That's that's probably what I would do. I, if I if I were in this situation as a child, I would have been like, turn into bats and fly off your roof and give me your neck so I can bite you. And then I'd like, you know, sink my canine teeth into him and draw. Oh, Jesus, blood. Lord. What? 
By Jesus Lord, I don't. I mean that in a purely secular way. Not that I'm secular, yeah. but like non non religious conforming. Um, but I had a yeah. dark past before I turned to Gorma. We've talked about this before. I was a bit of a a bit of a messed up child. Well, we both were. You um, know, we both were. But it sounds like um, sounds like he didn't really hurt anyone. You just had a little bit of a delusion. You know, we've all been there. To start a cult. We've all wanted to start cults. Actually, when I was younger, um, I told people that I was going to start a cult called the Order of the Bloodbeard, based on my last name, Beard. <laughs> well, how old were you? Uh, I think I was in like middle school. The Order uh, of I the Bloodbeard. The Order of the Bloodbeard. Yeah, what I told people is that to join. We never actually did any of this, but I just hypothetically, I was like, if you want to join the Order of the Bloodbeard, what you have to do is you have to cut <laughs> cut your face. On each side, and let the blood rain down, and then you have to, like, <laughs> put your head inside of a freezer and let the blood freeze there, so then you have, like, a frozen blood. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? This first the cat story, and then this? Just so you guys know... Just not to plug. No, this no, isn't no, to no, plug. Don't talk the, about the cat story. No, no. This don't isn't talk to plug the, the Patreon story. episode. <laughs> well, we talked about the cat story no. in the main episode, but then just so you guys know, <laughs> I'm not trying to plug the Patreon. But in the what is it? The fourth bonus episode, you say something. Uh-huh. I'm not gonna say what it is, just because you know I'm trying to. I'm trying uh-huh. to get get that boat money this week <laughs> to pay back for yeah. the. But I don't want the boat. I'm trying to pay back the payments that we owe debt. Whatever. Blah blah blah. Boring. You um, started to like the boat. We all know that. It, it is smooth. It is a smooth ride, but it's fine. It's whatever. Um, we have like a week left until they take it from us. But um, well, we're sorry. I got lost in the boat in talk. The bonus episode. The bonus episode. You do say cat. even more weird things that you did as a kid, and this is like the third or fourth like odd thing. <laughs> like that's like truly gruesome. <laughs> like what? Like what the hell? Well, what do you? What? What part of it is a cult besides that part of it? Uh, I think it was just, yeah, I was just saying that people would have to follow my every command if they were, you know, part of the order of the blood beard. I never actually did this. I was just hypothetically thinking like, hey guys, if I did start a cult, it'd be pretty I know cool. You, I hope you didn't actually do it. I don't know. That's not what I'm worried about. I'm not worried about whether or not you actually did it. Obviously you didn't. I had an active imagination. Okay. We've all thought about ways that we could mutilate ourselves to start cults. Come on. Yeah. Don't act like I'm weird or that I'm like. <sighs> well, I think all, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is that compared to the way I would start a cult, if I did start a cult, which I would never do, obviously, I would only start a real religion. Uh, this is pretty tame, and I feel like it's Gormu will forgive you for it. What do you think? Um. Yeah, I I agree with this. You know, especially we're we are uh, we're suckers for a good like concluding sentence about Gormu at the end of a confession. Yeah. Like, like I won't lie, you yeah. can't. You can sweeten me up. I mean, if you if at the end of it you really mm-hmm. seem like you're sorry, I will not lie. Like, yeah. You, e- even if you talk <laughs> about some pretty heinous, horrible things in your <laughs> confession, as long as you ended up with like I genuinely love Gormu, then we'll probably yeah. more times than not just be like yeah. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. So I think with this one, we can safely say that this sister of Gormism is forgiving. Forgiving. Wow. Let's move on to the next confession. That was a great little confession. A little bit shocking. The whole uh, kids giving hickeys to each other uh, during school is a sight that I want to forget about forever. Um, Yeah, I don't really want to think about that at all. Yeah. But let's talk about this one. This is coming from another sibling of Gormism, and the title is Play Dead. Okay? Um, I have a little sibling, they, them, and we are five years apart in age. When I was in about third grade, so eight or nine years old, I thought it would be really funny to play dead in front of my sibling on Halloween before we went trick-or-treating. Classic Halloween prank, pretty harmless. You just lay there and you're like, eh, and then they just sort of go, eh, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Classic Halloween prank. And then they go, then they grab the defibrillator and they're like, wake up. Hey, come on, I'm losing him here, I'm losing him here. Come on. It's classic, it's funny. Um, Okay, here we go, here we go. At first, they were on to me, telling me to wake up so we could go. Um, I didn't move, and I tried to breathe so softly that it wasn't clear that I was indeed breathing. Very hard to pull off. I don't really know how that's Mm. completely possible, but, you know, uh, 
five years apart in age. Oh, so this was literally like they were eight or nine years old, and the little sibling was like was like uh, three or four years old. So yeah, they're very so young. young that they're stupid and can't so, tell. The, you know, my my frontal don't cord, understand the concept of my frontal lobe isn't developed. Yeah, grow up, <laughs> stupid children. Literally, um, literally. Uh, at first, they were on to me, telling me to wake up so we could go breathe really softly. Then they started to freak out a little and tried even harder to wake me up. I should have stopped them, but I just kept pretending to be dead. The longer I played dead, the more they panicked. But at the time, I thought it was really funny, so I fucked with them until they were way past crying. I only stopped because my parents walked in and told me to. Looking back, I absolutely traumatized my little sibling, and I feel awful about it. That's why I'm confessing my sin today. <laughs> oh, here we go, here we go, baby. <laughs> I can only hope and pray that Gormu might forgive me for my acts. So this is my bread and butter right here. Yeah. It would bring yeah. me much jubilee. Oh, <laughs> wow. You're going to be excited in this confession. Bring me much jubilee if this weight could be lifted from my shoulders. Wow. I mean, can I just wow. say yeah. forgiven? <laughs> just, you're you forgiven, forgiven. But overall, eh, three, three or four year old. I mean, come on. What is there? What is there to say? Yeah, I mean, you probably should have, uh, once you saw that your sibling was in genuine distress, you probably should have, you know, stopped playing dead. But sometimes you got to commit to the bit, you know? You always got to commit to the bit. You can't just stop committing to a bit because someone's traumatized sometimes. Some people are just soft and you (laughs) have to, no, I think, (laughs) I think we should hold you to that to that quote we should quote that if you're in the twitter community there's people in the twitter community who like document who are are basically like uh historians who help us document all the verses that we Uh preach every sunday so i think we should have some of them throw in your quote right there what did you say can you say it again i think we might have missed it in the mix oh i think i uh i don't remember saying anything we can probably move on. we could probably have someone go back and, and check it out um no problem I want to tell I want to tell you one thing I used to do uh, not on Halloween but oh, I God, used to here do we go. this on <laughs> Come on and not what are you going to do not everything like, I did was electrocute a rat in your laundry room or something That seems yeah. like something you'd do No No I never did that You need to tell more stories of fucked up things you did as a child so that I don't just come across looking like a, a crazy child I could come uh, I I I have a uh, Get back to me next week. Ask me about my turtle story next week. <laughs> okay. Just ask me about my turtle story. <laughs> Feels like there might be something there. Yeah. I used to love April Fool's Day. That was like my favorite Halloween. Okay. As a, or favorite Halloween. Favorite holiday as a child because I was a little bit of a jokester. Uh-huh. So uh, okay. me and my friends on multiple April Fool's Days, we uh, went trick-or-treating on April Fool's Day. Which was uh, really fun. We dressed up in Halloween costumes. That's awesome. Went, How like, old were you? Yeah. Uh, I think I was like 13 or something. Oh, that's 13, pretty good. 14. That's a pretty classic April Fool's prank right there. I think Gorma would yeah. like that. You should tell him that story. I hope you're not being sarcastic with me. Um, <laughs> why, why would I be sarcastic? <laughs> Where does that even know. come I from? I was just sensing some sarcasm in that statement. No, it was I would funny, never. Okay? It was, I it was think fun. that's actually we really got, funny. Uh, that's a good prank. We did get a few. Uh, we did actually get a few neighbors to um, give us candy. Oh yeah. We had most of the neighbors just like slam the door on us and were very confused, but it was fun. Some people need to just grow up, you know. Yeah, grow up and go along with my crazy April. Yeah. Prank. Well, why don't you go ahead and tell everybody this awesome, this awesome little confession we got here. All right. This one's called Dead Men Tell No Tales. Boom. It's a, it's like a pirate reference, right? Yeah. This is sort of a pirate um, themed one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got what? We got vampire and then we got death and now we got pirates. Wow. Sounds like a good Halloween to me. <laughs> I love that. Um, this happened to my younger sister a few years back. She was 11, I think. It was Halloween, so her and her two friends went trick-or-treating. At one of the houses that they stopped at, there was a man lying at the bottom of the steps, unmoving, groaning with some blood on him. My sister and her friends thought he was just playing pretend, and he was planning on jumping up to scare them once they approached the door. So they proceeded to stand at the fence, yelling at him and laughing. (laughs) 
Whoa. After a while, they walked up to him, still laughing and making fun of him. Then she and one of her friends started jumping back and forth <laughs> over him while he apparently just stared up at them, unable to speak. Oh then they noticed that the front door was wide open, so they peeked inside. No candy bowls in sight. Then they realized that the house wasn't decorated. A group of teenagers saw what was going on and called 911. My sister and her friends waited until the ambulance came and saw him be carted off on a stretcher. Then his wife came home and broke down at his side. My sister said that they were harassing this poor man for about <laughs> half an hour. <laughs> so yeah, my sister is a bit traumatized from that, and I bet that man is as well. I hope he was okay. Oh so he my wasn't God. dead. What a, cla- what a classic Halloween prank. That guy killed it. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> he committed to the bit. He really committed <laughs> he, to the bit. He was like, honey, you got to come over and pretend like I'm dead and start wailing and crying in front of me. This is going to be awesome. Because that's honestly, if your goal is to scare someone, you know, scaring is just a small version of trauma, you know, yeah. if you think about it. So if you really want to traumatize kids, it's a lot scarier because they expect that you're going to lay there acting dead and then come up and scare them. But it's actually more scary and traumatizing to just lay there fully dead for hours. Yeah, that's a that's like an epic, that's an epic maneuver, I think, right there. I, I think that's pretty sick. Um, let's do one more. We, funny enough, are doing more confessions this week than we did on confession day. Well, we didn't, we didn't even talk to, so, uh, oh yeah, yeah. I don't think, so they weren't even really apologizing. They didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I, and the sibling, I feel like didn't really do anything that bad either. If they thought that the, if they genuinely thought that the man was like, (laughs) fucking with them then yeah i feel like that's just a misunderstanding there's nothing to feel super ashamed about so i don't even think anyone needs forgiveness in this scenario yeah it sounds kind of like a big misunderstanding all around I, I mean they did jump like back and forth over him which like <laughs> yeah, seems yeah. like oh at that point wouldn't he have like done the scare and it was over but like Half an uh-huh. hour is a while, but like a couple 11 year olds, it's on Halloween. Like I, you know, I don't blame anyone in this situation except for the guy that hurt this poor man who was sitting out bleeding on his front porch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think in general, you know, if you think someone's pulling a prank, give it 10 minutes. But if it's a full half hour, there probably is uh, something more going on. There. Exactly. So I think we can confidently say that was a decent, uh, a good Halloween story. <laughs> That was a Halloween story, not really a sin. Yeah. Uh, Let's do one final one before we wrap it up here. We're almost done with service here. We're going to get the closing prayer done soon. But before that, we got one quick one called Love Tap. Okay? So, we got a little gourmet here who says, I work at a cemetery as a caretaker, and one of my many jobs is to take a trimmer to cut the grass around the stones. Mm, Fairly simple. (laughs) We always use a strap that connects to the trimmer. <laughs> Sorry, I Gormu was Gormu was going around in there. <laughs> He's working working his magic in there. It's okay. It's okay. We always use a strap that connects to the trimmers so we don't hurt our backs. Interesting. Okay. I was working on this very old section and I had noticed earlier that morning it looked like a ritual of some sort took place and they stuffed a possum into one of the trees what what is that even <laughs> who's they uh, one of those po- one of those possum rituals you know who who is they i work at a cemetery somewhere. and there was a ritual yeah. and random people stuffed a possum into the i don't what kind of i don't know um okay. the possum stuffers you know that's classic that's a classic uh, we all ritual. have our neighborhood possum stuff. Come on. I mean, don't don't judge. Don't judge just because you haven't tried it yet. Uh, after seeing that, I decided I wasn't going to work near the tree and just move over a few rows. I was switching out the line in the trimmer when I kept feeling this tugging on my hair. Oh, Lord. This is a little, this is getting a little spooky for me. I, are you sure you want me to keep going or do you want to stop? Or? I feel, I'm feeling palpitations. <laughs> I brushed it off because I thought to myself, it must have been the strap pulling on my hair. I stood up, and in that moment, my blood just went cold. If I had had the strap on, I wouldn't have been able to just get up. I looked around, and I didn't have the strap on the trimmer. 
I didn't even bring the strap with me. It was still in our cargo container. Needless to say, I packed my stuff and I went home for the day. Wow. That was left on an ominous note. Real, real yeah. little bit of a hair also, tug. Also, not really any sin that happened there. Listen, yeah, um, I guess today is more just like share share a couple of fun little... Share a spooky story. <laughs> we yeah. did ask them like, uh, I think a day before we did the episode. So I think we tried to like yeah. grab some fun little things, but overall again, uh, this one, I feel like we're getting farther and farther away from the definition of a sin, but it was yeah. a bit of a horror story. But I think the moral of your, the moral of the story, always make sure to have your strap on. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, yeah, that's interesting. I think, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Always make sure put the strap on your trimmer on your back so you don't hurt your back. Yep. Always um, make sure to have the strap on. You don't on need to say it again. So That's just, totally fine. Uh, but with that, you, yeah, yep. I'm going to say but with that. I'm going to keep saying that. But with that, uh, I think... We, I think you should... I Well... I think you, that I mean, was a good verbal cue of my own to I let think, you know that I was going <laughs> to... Continue? I think... I'm not ready for that, though. I think... That if we're if that's not a sin, then we need to get a moral out of it because it's still a sermon. So I think <laughs> we don't. Not I, everything's you, about you, getting something out of something. Why can't we just hang out? Yeah, with it Florida? is. If we're in a certain, well, I think that we're trying to teach people lessons okay. here. So, so what's the lesson? Tell everyone make, the lesson. Make sure to always have your strap on. And then yeah, you I say, know you said you that. Say it as well, I don't need to I say. You already said it. We don't have to say everything <laughs> you, twice. You need to say it so that we feel okay, like we're, in, you the, know, in union with each other. The fellowship, I think, is the word you were looking for, but that's fine too. In union. Fellowship with each other, yeah. Okay, fine. Make sure that you always have your strap on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was not very uh, convicted of you, but make sure you always have your strap on. Thank you. Okay. All right, now we are going to finish out the sermon with our closing prayer. Everyone, make sure, again, no blinking, stare straight. If, if you have uh, the sun nearby, make sure you look at the sun. Um, I, I think we're just going to probably add that, that people should be staring at the sun while we do this. I thought that was to make sure you got better at keeping your eyes open. I didn't know that was a part of the actual prayer. Yeah. Okay, look at the sun later. Here, just make sure you keep your eyes open. Okay, let's get it. That's what you say before prayers <laughs> in the church. Let's get it. Let's fucking get it. Um, okay. <sighs> Dear Gormu, thank you so much for this wonderfully spooky Halloween that we got to share together today. I think that, you know, the moral of the story that we all learned today in this sermon is... Uh, Always make sure to have your strap on. And I think that... <laughs> Come on. Come on. I did not know. I didn't, I didn't notice that you had your minion goggles on. What? I mean, it's just it's just a, it's a rite of passage, I feel like, if, to do it in a closing prayer. It's pretty awesome. And it helps me keep my I, eyes I, open. I, Focuses the seed into my eyes. Yeah. That's really good. Um, so, because I think when you say, make sure to have your strap on, I think that when the you people say that. around you, when anyone says that, I think that the people, the people in our lives are kind of like the strap that we have on to get us through the tough times. You know, that's why we're called the fellowship covenant. We're not just the covenant, we're the fellowship. You have to be in fellowship with those around you. You have to say, you're my strap and I got you on. You're my strap. I've got you on. And you, we all strap each other, we all are there for each other, so that if there's anything spooky comes up in our lives, we can say, hey, I'm here for you, and I've got you, and we are all together in Gormu. Because this world is a scary, spooky place, but that's why we all need to strap together um, in Gormu. Where's, and your, also, where's your hand? Is your hand up, even? Is it off? Oh, <laughs> What's going on and over also, there? Did you get did you get a little bit into too into the prayer? I got too I got too into the prayer. That's um, fine. And also, strap-ons are things that you can use to uh, fuck people, and wow. that would be a that could be a cool way to uh, engage in homosexual uh, activities with each other. So, uh, praise be. Uh, pray, praise be. 
Oh, wow, uh, that was that was another very convicting prayer, Brother Beard. I want to thank everybody for coming to the special Halloween thank service you. of the Fellowship Covenant. You know where to find us every single week. We're back here Sunday morning. It takes two seconds to subscribe. Check out the Instagram where we'll be posting announcements and everything else you need to know about the church. And we hope you have a very safe and wonderful Halloween. Please be blessed and go on with your Sunday. Praise be. It takes, it go takes ahead. two seconds to subscribe. And it takes two dollars to come inside the inner sanctum, the extra sanctum. The higher sanctum. Higher sanctum. Unnecessary higher sanctum. addendum to the episode, but... No, I felt that was necessary. But of come course... Come over to Patreon! There's a... Forget about it. Praise be! Have a good Halloween! Happy Halloween! What a weird... What a jumbled out end of the episode. <laughs> Alright, end it. End it. End it. Go on. Jerky. Yeah, copy, paste.